and hello there, welcome to the Red October Network. Thank you for watching another video here vlog. It's uh it's uh, pretty much uh September now and so we're starting to get into election season. So and everybody's talking about all the things uh you know, the the economy, jobs but there was there was a, a movement especially where it's called the Tea Party. Uh, with the Tea Party, they've said, oh, we don't like government infringing on our rights. So, and I was thinking about it, and I thought, well, what's one of the things that people say is infringement on rights? I thought, seatbelt laws. Now, you know, everybody says, oh, buckle up for safety. It's the law. But why should it be the law? I mean, it's your own personal responsibility and, uh, you know, if you get hurt or something like that, it should be your fault. Now, everybody says, oh, that's silly, you know, but, you know, it's, it's, it's just, it's ridiculous. But I know some people in my family alone who don't want to wear their seatbelts. They think they're uncomfortable, they think they're silly. And I ask myself, I said, well, why... Why are there seatbelt laws? I mean, there's no benefit if you don't wear your seatbelt, you're not hurting anybody. You're hurting your own family, but if you look on the converse of it, we have laws here in Pennsylvania that say that you don't have to wear uh, a helmet when riding a motorcycle. So why not a seatbelt law? So I'm doing a little research on it, and... Um, you know, it's it. They say it's a government thing. It costs the the economy 137 billion dollars. But I would say, you know, if you're in a crash and you don't wear your seatbelt, you know, we shouldn't have to help you. You know, if it's clear that you were thrown from the car and you weren't wearing a seatbelt, you know, I don't know. And it's just it's not your fault. And and. Uh, it's just really weird because you think about it, you know, if you don't want to wear a seatbelt, that's an infringement of your rights. If you want to take the risk, if you want to have, if you want to put uh, <laughs> nitromethane in a, in a, uh, in next to your furnace in your basement, so be it. If you want to keep guns where your kids are, so be it. And I just wonder, I wanted your thoughts about that because... You know, we, we have laws that say, you know, that you don't have to, you don't have to wear the, uh, you don't have to wear a helmet when you're riding a, a, a motorcycle. So, you know, it's, it's just, if it, if it's fatal, it, it, it's just, it's fatal. And, so, it's, it, and, you know, National Highway Traffic and Safety Administration, uh, says, oh, this is, uh, you know, this is a fatal thing, and, but it, you know, one could construe based on all the things, you know, all the laws about health care, and, um, you know, about welfare and everything, that this is just the government trying to get in the way, and it shouldn't be doing this. So that's just a weird thought, and, and, you know, if you think about it, it's just, you can construe it as just the government getting in your way. And, you know, if this is true here on uh, University of Alabama um, website here that every year is $137 billion, but we shouldn't have to pay for it. You know, if you think about it, we don't have to pay... Uh, for people who choose to smoke. So, and besides, if it's true that, you know, they tend to be without insurance or whatnot, then so be it. So you think about it. What is the government getting in our way with seatbelt laws? Should we take the government government's role out of our lives and say, you don't have to wear a seatbelt. But, you know, if you get hurt, own, it's your own damn fault. So I wondered what you you would think about that. You know, is it is it logical? So give me your thoughts on that, and 
uh, leave your comments and whatnot. We'll see you later.